Hello Space Fans and welcome to another edition of Space Fan News. In this episode, our favorite exoplanet hunting space telescope known as TESS has managed to capture a black hole tearing a star apart. Not only is TESS finding worlds around other stars, but it's keeping a vigilant eye on the rest of the galaxy to find things just like this. And according to NASA, capturing this event is hard. It only happens once every 10 to 100,000 years in our galaxy. Okay, I better set this up because it's been a while since I've talked about TESS. TESS stands for the Transiting Exoplanet Survey Satellite, and ever since it became operational in July of 2018, it has been scanning the sky in segments, looking at each segment for 24.7 days, trying to spot teeny tiny dips in brightness that would indicate that a planet might be in orbit around that star. So the primary mission for TESS is broken up as follows. It scans the southern area of the sky, then it switches position and starts looking in the northern hemisphere of the sky. Now the dip in brightness of the star, if they find one, would be due to a planet passing between the star itself and the detectors on board, and astronomers call that a transit. The test will look at every inch of the night sky in about 25 day chunks and build up light curves for over 200,000 stars with four wide field optical CCD cameras. And it will do photometry of some pre-selected targets that will be recorded every two minutes. In addition to that, TESS will obtain full-frame images of the entire four-camera field of view, the entire thing, which is 24 by 96 degrees across. And they'll do that at a cadence of about 30 minutes, and this will allow people to do additional science. So one more thing you need to know about TESS. As it goes through its sectors, it's in a weird 13.7-day polar orbit around the Earth, which allows it to image the entire celestial sphere during its two-year primary mission. And because of this orbit and the way it scans the sky, there's always an area that TESS can be looking at. It's always seen by TESS. And they unimaginatively call this the continuous observing zone. And there's one of those for each hemisphere, the north and the south. And it's basically just an area where a bunch of segments overlap, which is where today's news comes in. Because TESS was looking at the southern celestial hemisphere back in January of 2019, all the while looking at its continuous observing zone, you know, that part where everything overlaps, it caught something pretty darn cool there. The optical sensors on TESS saw a brightening that no one else had yet seen. In an event that became known as Assassin 19 BT, TESS had caught the very beginning of a star being eaten by a black hole. Now, astronomers are calling this a disruption event, but we all know what it really is. It's a freaking black hole devouring a freaking star, plain and simple. Okay, so immediately after TESS saw this, nothing happened. And you know why? Because the TESS satellite only transmits data to Earth every two weeks. And once NASA got it, the data had to be processed at Ames Research Center in Silicon Valley, California. And so the first TESS data on the tidal disruption were not available until March 13th, 2019, a couple months after the event actually happened. So the timeline's a little wonky here, so stay with me. The All Sky Automated Survey for Supernovae, that's Assassin, which is without a doubt one of the best acronyms astronomers have ever come up with, is a worldwide network of 20 robotic telescopes headquartered at Ohio State University. And this network first noticed the event on January 29th, 2019. After astronomers received the alert, they told NASA's SWIFT and ESA's XMM Newton Space Telescopes, which between the two of them looks at a lot of wavelengths from visible light and ultraviolet to x-rays, to start getting observations in the area. SWIFT's UV data and XMM Newton's x-ray data were very early in the event, to be sure. I mean, this is the earliest anyone has ever captured something like this. But when the test data became available, the visible light from that event was captured from the beginning. There was no event, and then there was an event. That's the beginning, making this a really cool collection of data. The test data allowed people to see the very beginning of the star being devoured before anyone else. 
And soon after, well, the other instruments got it. So let's look at the event. Assassin 19 BT is the destruction of a star that may have been similar in size to our sun. As it approached the black hole, which astronomers estimate is about 6 million times the mass of our sun and is located 375 million light years away in the constellation Volans, it also sits in the center of a galaxy called <laughs> 2 Mass X J0700113766022251. I've been doing this a while, so I've gotten better at it. <laughs> the star began to break up. Now, the UV data from SWIFT showed that the temperature of the star dropped by about 50% from around 40,000 to 20,000 degrees Celsius. And it did that over a few days. And it's the first time such an early temperature decrease has been seen in a tidal disruption before. Astronomers also usually, in these disruption events, see a low level, a small level of X-ray emission. And they saw that here with this event uh, with XMM Newton. So in this case, we had a very high amount of UV emission, which was seen in SWIFT, and not so many X-rays. And astronomers really aren't quite sure why this happens, but this was a typical disruption event, according to astronomers. But of course, as with most, thing, most things, there are no shortage of theories. Maybe the light bounces through the newly created debris and loses energy, or maybe the disk forms further from the black hole than we originally thought, and the light isn't so affected by the object's extreme gravity. And this is where more early time observations like this are needed. And so the test data here will really help understand these emission conundrums, quandaries, if you would. <laughs> so I don't know about you, but watching a star getting eaten by a black hole is pretty impressive. But one thing bugged me about this at first. Remember I said that the astronomers say this is a rare event, like we don't see these except for one every 10 to 100,000 years or so. And so, if they are so rare, how come astronomers have seen so many of these already? I mean, they have a catalog of these things that they've seen. So, is this a huge stroke of luck that Tess got this one? Well, the once in a 10 to 100,000 years number comes from the occurrence within our galaxy. And in the Milky Way, a star gets devoured by a black hole every 10,000 years or so, according to this number. But this event was seen in another galaxy 375 million light years away. And of course, there are trillions of galaxies in the universe. So the chance of seeing these things happen multiple times, even a multiple times a year, is possible somewhere in the universe. And that's what's so cool about space telescopes like TESS. It turns out there's lots of other really cool science that can get done besides just looking for planets around other stars, which you got to admit is pretty cool all by itself. Okay, I get that. But in addition to finding planets, TESS can monitor pulsars, flaring stars, find supernovae, and even catch the occasional near-Earth object or two. When you look at the entire sky over and over for a long period of time, it's kind of like leaving your surveillance camera on record all the time at your house. You catch all kinds of stuff you never thought you'd see, and maybe a couple things you wish you hadn't. <laughs> but hey, okay, it's your house, no judging here. <laughs> Well, that's it for this episode, space fans. Deep Astronomy Patreon patrons bring these to you. And if you want to see more SFNs, consider helping out by becoming a patron yourself. I do this all by myself, and I'd love to expand my capabilities a little bit more, so every little bit helps. And thanks to all of you for watching. And as always, keep looking up.